Hello, folks, and welcome to High Society with Paxton Quigley. I don't know if you know this, but there are more than 100 cannabinoids that are found in the cannabis plant. And while we have some knowledge about the, the primary cannabinoids, such as THC and CBD, we, we know less about the secondary or minor cannabinoids. So today we are going to delve into the lesser known cannabinoids. And one of them is called Delta 8 THC. And it occurs in the cannabis plant in very small concentrations. And in the last couple of years, researchers have discovered that they have unique properties and unique potential. Uh, there's something in the Delta 8 THC molecule that is different from all others, I guess. And these include anti-nausea properties. Uh, they can serve as an appetite stimulant. And also, and to me, this is the most important, it reduces pain and anxiety, since I don't know about you out there, but either you're anxious or you have pain or you have both. So anyway, this will be very important for you to know more about Delta-8, that's for sure. Also, Delta-8, THC can also produce uh, kind of a heady psychoactive experience for some people, not for all people, although it is less than the Delta 9 THC. Now, interestingly enough, under the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill, all hemp derived byproducts, including Delta 8 THC, are legal and can be produced and sold in all of the United States, except unfortunately, Idaho, where, and I don't know why, hemp remains illegal. So like almost everything when it comes to cannabis legislation, it's, it is complicated. And to sort all of this out, I've asked uh, Mr. Eric Recker, he's executive vice president of a Delta ATHC company that's called Indica Cloud. And I really like that name. And he's here with us today to, to help clear us up on the confusion between Delta 8 and, 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 and Delta 9. And I, I'm sure people will be really interested. So Eric Recker, welcome to High Society with Paxton Quigley. Thank you very much. It's an absolute honor. I do appreciate you bringing me on. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Well, I'm, I'm excited and we're both former Chicagoans, so we, we have a lot in common, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so let, let's, let's get to uh, Delta 8 TCH, or THC. I want to say TCH, it's THC. And, sure. and, and tell us uh, in lay terms, what's different between the two, Delta 8 and Delta 9? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> as you alluded to, many people are familiar with uh, the main cannabinoids, right? So looking at CBD and Delta 9 THC, um, one of the lesser known, but uh, becoming more and more popular is uh, Delta 8 THC. Um, it has uh, some similar compounds uh, to Delta 9 THC. Um, it is uh, another cannabinoid that is derived from the hemp plant, um, and it provides similar effects to Delta 9, such as uh, stimulating appetite, uh, the reduction of, of pain and anxiety, and in most instance, instances, uh, without the paranoia. Uh, so a lot of people will actually call it the less intense little brother of Delta 9 THC. Interesting. Now, um, although Delta 8 is, is not pro prohibited under the Farm Bill, I understand that there are some of the federal agencies including the DEA that have not completely weighed in on whether Delta H should remain legal and how it should be uh, sold and regulated. So has, this is, which I was interested, do you think Delta H fell through the cracks of the country's patchwork of, of cannabis regulation? I mean, it, it seems like the farm bill is on your side. What is your take on all of this? Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting topic, and, and I can't say necessarily whether or not it, it fell through the cracks, um, but I, I think there's a missing education piece here, you know, very similar uh, to when um, they, it, we're looking at states that were 
uh, looking at regulating or not regulating uh, Delta 9 THC and CBD. Um, just like CBD and traditional Delta 9 THC, there was um, a great deal of hesitancy um, when uh, the popularity started years ago. Um, and I think that uh, lawmakers, policymakers, uh, just are, are, are still kind of sifting through um, from an educational standpoint and um, we, we do think that uh, once the, the general public policymakers are educated on Delta H THC, um, we're gonna see that there's gonna be less hesitancy, uh, much like CBD um, and traditional Delta 9. Um, from that standpoint, uh, from a legality standpoint, we take great pride in ensuring that our products are fully compliant um, uh, based on the 2018 uh, uh, hemp bill uh, and we, you know, also um, only distribute to states where it is fully legal. You had mentioned that, you know, some states such as Idaho um, are not legal. And uh, from a Delta 8 standpoint, um, actually, there are 11 states uh, where we uh, cannot do business. So we really oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yes. So there are 39 states uh, currently where Delta 8 THC is legal. And that's where we focus a majority of our time is, is making sure that consumers in the uh, remainder uh, 39 states who can enjoy um, Delta 8 THC, uh, we put a large focus in making sure that they are aware of our fully compliant premium products. Okay. Now, I know that right now a lot of people are, are you know, anxious and many people are using various painkillers, whether it's a, a prescribed painkiller or an aspirin or whatever. Um, and do you think that Delta-8 could play a role in safe and legal pain relief since it is available practically throughout the, the country? And are producers of, of Delta-8 pushing the idea or are they trying to stay away from making medical claims? What are, what, what, what are you doing, for, for example? Sure, sure. And that's, that's a great question. And, you know, I, I can't stand here uh, or sit here and, and make, you know, medical claims on, on Delta-8. Um, but one thing I, I can do is, is let you know that uh, we are focusing on providing a, a compliant uh, premium product for our customers um, where um, we want our customers to essentially uh, choose why they are using Delta-8. You know, it could be a variety of reasons, as we mentioned before. Um, that Delta 8 does have similar uh, properties as Delta 9, such as stimulating appetite, reducing pain and anxiety. And whatever the, whatever the reason is uh, that consumers want to uh, consume Delta 8, uh, we just hope that they look at our products uh, because we are providing a, a very premium product um, that is fully compliant and goes through um, strict lab testing to ensure that our customers are happy. Do you think that because uh, Delta-8 uh, is less, so, shall we say, euphoric, that there will be a lot of people out there that would prefer to have Delta-8 rather than Delta-9? Sure, does that, sure. Does that, yeah. enter in, 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 does that enter an equation? I mean, uh, I, I would think so, especially uh, people who perhaps have, have never, for example, smoked uh, marijuana and are, are, are fearful of, of getting high. Do you think that that's a, an important factor maybe to, to, to tell people about? Well, you know, again, I, I can't necessarily speak um, to um, everybody's, uh, you know, makeup. Everybody has a different endo, endocannabinoid system, right? So everybody reacts differently um, to THC, um, whether it's Delta 9 THC or Delta 8 THC. You know, I can speak to personal experience. Um, Delta 9 THC um, at times can be difficult for me um, because of the paranoia effect and it's a little too intense for me. Uh, but Delta 8 um, has been fantastic. Um, you know, I've, uh, I, I've played sports all of my life and um, I, you know, have lower back pain from playing golf and playing basketball. And I, I will utilize Delta um, 8 THC to help with uh, some of that, that pain. Um, and it doesn't necessarily give me that, that really intense feeling uh, like Delta 9 THC would. Oh, that's interesting. Now, I, I have read that Delta 8 THC is apparently the fastest growing segment among the many, uh, and I'm reading this, among the many hemp derived 
by products including uh, CBD. Um, is, is that really happening that this is, you know, that, that there's a chance that maybe people won't even be using <laughs> uh, something else, they'll just be using, for example, your product? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I can't necessarily speak to, um, you know, consumers of, uh, of other products such as, you know, CBD, Delta 9, THC, um, and e even other pain relievers. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to uh, sit here and say and make medical claims and that sort of thing. I, I do feel like there is a, a great space uh, for Delta 8 THC, um, especially premium products. Um, and it, it's kind of interesting how we got our start. Uh, we, we started as a CBD distribution uh, company, uh, distributing uh, premium CBD brands uh, throughout the Midwest. And uh, we, we started to field more and more questions from store owners uh, regarding Delta 8 THC, you know, asking questions, um, hey, do you, do you guys sell uh, Delta 8 THC products? We're getting, we're starting to field questions from customers. Um, that are interested in a um, high-end uh, premium uh, Delta-8 product. Um, so we kind of went to the drawing board and, and were discussing within the, the executive team of, uh, you know, how we could potentially enter the market. And um, just based on our CBD business, we always wanted to work with premium brands where we could stand behind. And uh, we decided to make a push and uh, start in the cloud. Um, based off of wanting um, a, a premium brand that was fully compliant in the marketplace um, that we can really stand behind and uh, that consumers are going to really enjoy. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we got our start. Interesting. Now, where do you get your, your uh, materials? Uh, do, do you source it from various uh, a, a different areas in the country? We do, yes. Um, that, that was part of the research and development that uh, we put forth uh, when we wanted to launch the brand is, um, you know, we, we didn't have uh, the ability to go out and uh, start a manufacturing facility and, and start our own grow operation. So uh, what we wanted to do was uh, look at first local. Um, and, you know, I, I was based out of the, the city of Chicago. Our company is based out of Milwaukee. So we really do have those Midwest roots. And we really wanted to look at locally um, sourced, um, you know, farms and manufacturing facilities and, um, you know, byproducts of uh, Delta-8 to ensure um, that one, logistically it made sense, but we also wanted to make sure that it was premium. So um, currently we uh, source products um, from uh, multiple states throughout the West, uh, locally to uh, the Midwest, Illinois, um, uh, Tennessee, um, uh, Wisconsin. So um, we do source our products um, from quite a few different areas, um, but we do ensure that it is um, of uh, premium quality. That's, that, that's good to, to know. I want to um, ask, um, how, how is it exactly consumed uh, most of the time? Do you, do you have any figures on, are there people, you know, eating, eating it as a, you know, Eating sure. edibles, or can it, or are they vaping, or are they smoking? Uh, is there a preference amongst people? And also, does it depend maybe on age? That perhaps older people who uh, never were part of the the beginning uh, of, of of cannabis, so to speak, uh, sure. would be fearful and, and and would want to not use, uh, uh, you know, smoke it or, or vape it. Uh, do you have any any um, statistics on on all of that? Yeah, we don't necessarily have statistics yet on, on demographic and, and who is, is purchasing what. We are pulling that data on a daily basis. Um, I will say we have uh, a wide range of products um, and different ways to actually consume Delta-8. Um, we have uh, everything from our nano gummies, which are water-soluble um, uh, gummies, to uh, our candy line where we have uh, milk chocolate squares, peanut butter cups, uh, buttercream caramels that are absolutely delicious. Um, we use a 100 year old chocolatier um, that infuses the Delta-8 into the chocolate and the candies and, and they're phenomenal. Uh, they really are. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, in, in this space, sometimes it can, it, it can uh, be, you know, rather difficult, even in the cannabis space uh, or the Delta-9 space um, when, having edibles that sometimes you can get that kind of grainy taste and, and with our candies, they're fantastic. You don't get that. 
Um, we also have uh, traditional vape cartridges uh, that are used for, uh, you know, 510 battery pens. Uh, we do have disposable vape products. Uh, we also have a vegan gummy line uh, where we have three different flavors uh, from a mixed berry flavor, watermelon rush, and tropical twist. All three are delicious. Uh, we, we also have uh, um, concentrates, um, which can be consumed um, by uh, the traditional dabbing or using a concentrate um, pen, or you can also use uh, for cooking um, if you, you want to utilize the concentrates for, for making other edibles. Um, we also have uh, uh, five gram flour, um, which is a really nice white CBG uh, flour that is uh, Delta 8 sprayed. Um, and then we also have uh, pre-rolls, um, which we utilize uh, that same Delta-8 um, isolate um, and same white CBG flour. Well, it all sounds re really good. And what is your uh, uh, price point from, um, sure. give, give us a little information on, on how much some of your products cost. Yeah, okay. truly wide range. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we wanted to make it so uh, consumers um, uh, of all walks of life, um, if they are looking for a, a good Delta 8 product that they can consume uh, in the cloud products. So um, we have our gravity boxes of our candies that, that go from $4 a piece, um, which provides 25 milligrams of Delta 8 THC in, in one of our premium candies, um, to uh, $5 two-piece gummy packs, um, to um, uh, our $15 pre-rolls, our, our uh, five gram flour MSRPs at uh, $39.99, our disposable vapes are uh, $29.99, and our vape cartridges are $39.99. So really, um, it, it kind of, it's, it's kind of a wide range, and a lot of our products last for a while. So if you are spending uh, $39.99 for a uh, vape cartridge or a five gram flour, that's going to last you. Um, so it's, it's kind of a wide range of pricing. And what, what about the strengths? Uh, do each of these uh, products have a different strength uh, in, in terms of, of Delta-8? Do some have more yeah. than others, would you say? They do. And, and we, uh, as I alluded to earlier today, everything that we do is lab tested by DEA registered labs. So um, we will put on every single batch, new batch of our products, we will put a new uh, COA label, one on the product, and then we also put it on our website. So you know exactly what you're consuming. Um, from an edible standpoint, typically we're, we're right around that 25 milligram um, dosage for our candies and our gummies. Um, and then our vape cartridges, our disposable vapes, um, our flour, our pre-rolls, are they are batch specific, um, but uh, they do range um, in uh, the amount of uh, Delta-8 uh, concentrate. Do you think you'll ever go into the so-called cosmetic line where you'll have, uh, you know, creams for the face and, uh, you know, uh, products that more women might be interested in? Do you think sure. you'll, you'll go that far? Is that is part of that your game plan? Well, we haven't gotten that far yet. We are uh, we are working on uh, quite a di uh, quite a few different products that that we're really interested in. Um, one in which that we've been really researching a lot, um, which has a lot of buzz in, in the in the Delta 9 um, industry is more of the adult beverage space. Um, and that's that's one thing that we have looked at um, pretty heavily. Um, and then we're consistently um, having our um, our, our uh, partners um, that we get uh, other product from, you know, doing research on, you know, what other kind of products can we bring to market? Um, so we're, we're very interested in, in continuing to expand um, our product base, um, but we don't have uh, definitive plans on, on kind of getting into more of that, uh, I, I guess you could call it female wellness space, right? Yes, yes. It's important. It's a big, it is a big <laughs> market. Is. Uh, do you uh, work with uh, scientists uh, and, and, and doctors in terms of, of finding out what's what's going on out there and and uh, and what you would like to have go out you know happen yeah that, that's a great question you know obviously our labs are, are working hand in hand uh, with scientists on a daily basis uh, we have reached uh, reached out to uh, medicinal doctors and, and researchers 
quite a bit. Um, and, it, you know, we, we haven't, you know, done a lot of research specifically um, uh, on, you know, medicinal benefits and that sort of thing. It is of interest, um, but we just, you know, haven't gotten that far yet. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure you will in, in, the, in the next couple of years. And, and what do you see in terms of the, the, the total cannabis uh, market in the next five, 10 years in the United States? And then, of course, in the world, uh, do you think it, 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 it will be just easy all over the United States to to pick up any kind of cannabis product uh, at, at your local drugstore or wherever? Uh, that is that is a great question. You know, um, I look at it very similar uh, to, you know, prohibition. And um, I do think at some point in time, um, you know, I'm not a legislator, uh, but I, I do have hopes that it will be federally um, legal. Um, and I think that, you know, we have a, a, um, a, a great um, um, uh, president currently that, that could very well push that initiative forward. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm cautious to say that it's going to be um, available in every single state because much like prohibition and even still, I mean, when you look at uh, the adult beverage or alcohol, uh, alcohol industry, I mean, there are still dry counties and still places where you can't get certain things. So um, I do think at some point that it will be federally legal. Um, however, um, I don't uh, necessarily see it at every convenience store. I do, see, I do think that it's going to be uh, regulated, um, but I'm very hopeful um, that the cannabis industry does continue to move forward. Um, more and more states continue to legalize uh, Delta 9 THC and, and with the hopes of CBD and then also Delta 8 THC. Um, and within five to 10 years, um, that yeah, it's going to look drastically different than what it does now. And I hope in a positive sort of a way, although, you know, hearing about the DEA, uh, you, you know, they're, they're sometimes called the monster. Um, do you think they will change their attitude and maybe uh, uh, become more difficult in terms of, of what you're doing? Do you see that happening at all in, in the murky uh background? Yeah, I, I can't necessarily speak to that. Um, I am hopeful. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that they will do the right thing and um, that they see more and more the, the positive uh, uh, effects and, and benefits of uh, the cannabis plant. And I hope that we can continue to uh, move forward and, uh, you know, really make this a lot more mainstream um, and uh, kind of alleviate and, and disregard the misconceptions of, of cannabis and and more and more people become aware of, of the positive benefits. That's good. You know, I wish we could talk uh, longer about this and we'd love to have you back on, but I'd like you to uh, tell people where they can find your products and purchase your products since they're available in, in, in most parts of the country. Yes, thank you very much. I, I wish we had more time as well. And I definitely hope that we can uh, continue this conversation at some point. Um, but if anybody out there is listening, uh, would love for you to go to our website, indicloud.com. That's N, or I'm sorry, I N D I C A L O U D.com. Uh, you can purchase um, our wide range of products, which can go to most areas of the country and in 39 different states. Um, also, any um, wholesalers, retailers that are interested in carrying our products, uh, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out. Um, we're uh, very interested to work in all parts of the country and, and definitely think that you would enjoy our products. Well, that sounds good. And I should uh, tell you that uh, I co-own an organic food supermarket in Palo Alto, and uh, we've been selling uh, CBD products for the last number of years. And uh, I would like that. I'd like them to know about your company. And uh, I think they would be very interested in it. So we, we can talk about that another time, yeah. of course. Uh, <laughs> But uh, thank you so much, Eric, uh, for being on today. And um, we hope that we will talk with you again in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Paxton. I really appreciate it. Certain, certainly. Um, and and uh, I, I think he's got a good thing going there, folks. <laughs> um, what can I say next, except uh, that we have to say goodbye to all of you. Uh, all of our shows can be heard on Apple, Audible, Spotify, Speaker, 
obviously Cannabis Radio, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I'd also like to thank our listeners who purchased my latest suspense novel. It's called Just Try Me, and it's available on, available, excuse me, on Amazon. And finally, listeners, please stay safe, wear a mask, and get vaccinated when your turn comes up. Because I truly we believe this, we can beat this virus, but we have to work together. I'm Paxton Quigley.